Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction. You did some Corbin. I'm Rick. And you can follow us on Instagram, Instagram Twitter, YouTube. Juice the Content. It's so juicy. If you'd like to support us on Patreon, and if you already do, thank, thank you, you so much. Uh, exclusive content there, blocked content, uh, full episode reactions. Yep. All different kinds of stuff. Oh, Go check chance. it out. Uh, and follow us on our personal YouTube channels. Links always in the description below. Today, we are reacting to a, a speech. Oh, cool. Uh, it's Sushant. Oh. Shusant Singh uh, Rajput. Uh, this is, uh, it's been highly, highly requested. Um, I think, remember, we've seen Shah Rukh Khan give. Mm -hmm. He gave a TED Talk. TED Talk. Yeah. Uh, this is Brute, uh, which is the um, channel. Uh, but he this is understanding the wisdom of Sushant Singh uh, Rajput. Wonderful. Uh, don't know what it's about, but um, um, I, uh, that's it. Cool. Here we go. Excuse me if I falter. Excuse me if I don't make sense. Excuse me if I get a panic attack right now. <laughs> but I'll try my best. We love you, anyway! That was a lovely introduction. Thank you so much for that. I have this habit of carrying chips in colleges, so. <laughs> I became an actor because I had a problem. I was an introvert. You know, I'm, I'm the youngest in my family. And I was so pampered in, in uh, my house that when I used to step out, I uh, didn't know how to deal with people. So I, I gradually I became this very shy introvert kid who could not talk. Well, I still cannot talk. And uh, I have a stage fright. So what I do generally as an actor is I hide behind all these fascinating characters and uh, then I'm confident. But uh, like right now, as I'm not acting, so there are problems that I have screwed up. I hate that that's uh, so excuse, right me if I <laughs> excuse me if I don't make sense. Excuse me if I get a panic attack right now. <laughs> but I'll try my best. We love you anyway! All right, I would love to share my journey with you, my learnings, and in case you decide to drop out and uh, join me in my room, it will come very handy. So, uh, I was thinking in the car, what do I talk about? What can I tell you that you already don't know? I'm assuming, and I think most probably, you guys are way much more smarter, and uh, better than what I was when I was your age. But after deep thinking, I, I, I zeroed down into two things that I can actually discuss about. These two things talk about chasing your dreams and actually living your dreams, which unfortunately nobody mentioned to me when I was starting out. And those two things are, can I write down, can you see this board? I love whiteboards. I always Man up to my own heart. Of, uh, right. professors, so, <laughs> <laughs> so those two things are the biggest lie and the only truth about success that I was told about. Now the biggest lie was money plus recognition is equal to happiness, is equal to success. So let me begin by mentioning that I come from a very um, middle class family. And when I was growing up, money was a big, big, big differentiator in my life. Also, in uh, the three generations of my family that I know of, that are documented, nobody knew what fame uh, felt like. So basically, uh, both uh, money and recognition were missing when I started out. So I already started out as a failure. Let me be very precise. So my family told me that I had to become an engineer. Medicals were booked for my sisters. 
<laughs> so once I'm an engineer, then I can, uh, you know, try a civil services examination and then probably, yeah, that will be like opening the doors for all kind of happiness and I'll be forever successful, I'll be forever happy. This is the condition that I experienced when I was growing up. Alright, fair enough. Good deal, so I became very good in studies. Did fairly well in my time board exams. And then off I went to Delhi for my plus two, got myself enrolled in a high school, and uh, with Evander and Fiji and half a dozen of uh, uh, other coach institutes. And uh, I used to share my room with three other similar aspirants. What it meant was, Every day after finishing my assignments, school assignments, and preparing for my engineering entrance exam, I had to wash my clothes, and I had to cook food for myself. But I wasn't complaining. Well, it was worth it, because after all, I was, for the very first time in my life, I was so close to become successful for the first time in my life. So yeah, finally I slogged, I got selected for seven engineering colleges and I decided to take admission in Delhi College of Engineering, which is now known as ETU. Thank you, I'm really my senior or junior. There was a celebration like this in my family too. <laughs> I could finally stop for a while and breathe, you know. I was telling myself that, you know what, now you have made it. You should be happy because you are supposed to be happy. But it wasn't working that much. Something was missing. There was a void that I could feel. So I, I thought maybe something bigger was required. For some reason, for some reason incessantly, while uh, the first 18-19 years of my life, the future me was much happier, much successful than the present me. So I was like, all right, fine. So I was forcing myself. I promised, uh, as I promised, I started preparing for civil services examination. And I was forcing myself to slog, uh, but I was bored. UBSC exams were still far away. In the meantime, I thought of doing theatre and uh, I thought to learn dance because uh, to counter the, the <clears throat> shyness that I had, still have, and also because there were no girls in my engineering college for some reason. We slog so much, you cry the entrance exam and you find that there are no girls. <laughs> so, yeah, so somebody told me that there are very uh, good looking girls in dance uh, schools. So I was like, fine, I go there. <laughs> and uh, once I started with performing arts, I knew one thing for sure. I knew that I quite liked it. And three years later, imagine me sitting in the campus, and I'm thinking, all right, I'm really interested in performing arts. And all I want to do is to earn money and to be recognized. So if I become a movie star, <laughs> hmm, I actually was very serious, and I dropped out of the college in the third year, when I was just two semesters away from getting the degree. <laughs> Engineering degree. <laughs> Came to Mumbai, got heavily into theatre and also the skills that I thought were necessary to become an actor. And uh, by the way, this time I stayed with six other guys in a similar location. <laughs> but this time I was prepared for it. This time there was one difference. I was driven. My self-respect was at stake. <laughs> My ex-college mates, one of them is sitting right here in my shirt. Uh, they thought that I was that disaster that folks in engineering and B schools should never become. So I had to prove a point to everybody. I had to prove a point to my family. Most importantly, I had to prove a point to myself. And this was the time when I was also a background dancer. So I was dancing behind all the possible stars that you can think of, Shah Rukh Khan, Shahid Kapoor, everybody. And I was thinking, I was thinking to myself while I was performing, okay, it's just three steps away, there, I have to get. And uh, everything will be solid. And I kept going like that. And two years later, guess what? I got myself my first big break. 
I was selected for a prime time show on the TV. But hear me out, it was a seriously a big break. Because I started earning. People started recognizing me. To be honest, I would deliberately go and roam in all these malls so that people would look at me, smile, ask my for it. Watching myself on TV for the first time, you have no idea how it feels for somebody like me to, uh, you know, just looking at me for, and I was looking at myself every day on TV. It was a big, big, big high. I also suddenly discovered that I actually had many friends from my poor. Absent all this why, but suddenly they popped up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the show became popular. So I was making good money to a point that money stopped being a differentiator in my life. And I was becoming more and more popular. Now, I cannot go to all those malls that I was going all alone. So I wanted somebody to be with me, to save me. I bought myself my first dream house. I bought myself my dream car. And just a note to you as well. <laughs> I was getting such female attention that my engineering college friends could only possibly dream of. <laughs> so I was having a time of my life. And then something unusual happened. I got used to everything. And I felt cheated. I stayed with all these dreams for 10 and 15 years of my life. I was promised happiness and I was promised success. But all these things stayed with me just for a few days. And I'm punctuating me because I started from zero money and zero recognition. So I was not happy. How can that be? I didn't like this version of success. And the future me again was nearly the present me. But this time, I decided otherwise. I would do something else. I, so that gets us to the second point, which is the only truth. Uh, I won't take too much time, I'll just try to keep it shut. I figured something. I figured that something seemingly big things were not that big once I got them. And looking back in the past, I realized that maybe smaller things were way bigger. And there was one thing that was missing in my life that was the cause of this illusion. And that thing that was missing was now. I was, all these years, just, I was obsessed about what's gonna happen. I used to draw those flowcharts that we are, uh, we are talking soon. But if this happens, I'll do that, and uh, six months from now, I'll be here. So I wanted to be in control. I was so obsessed about my future, I was taking the entire responsibility about the past, but all I was doing was frequently swinging from past to future, not living in actual sense. Well, <clears throat> I also figured that when I perform on stage or in front of camera, I'm so much excited. I am so much interested. I was paying so much attention that there was no room to think about future or the past. I was just there in the moment. I was alive in true sense when I was performing. And for the first time, trust me, in a long time, I understood the true meaning of success, which was not money plus recognition, but it was now plus excitement. This realization happened in 2011, and it has been five years. 
Now let me share another very short uh, story with you. When I was in school, 4 to 5.30 p.m. was the time when I was allowed to go out and play. I was asked to be an engineer, but the entire day I, was, I used to wait for 4 p.m. to happen. I would step out and the next one and a half hours felt like five minutes. I didn't understand uh, this then, but now very honestly, very confidently, I can tell you this, that I am living that 4 to 5.30 life right now, since last year. Cause and effects are, no, are, are not different. Excitement is the cause, excitement is the effect. I get hired again and again because all these success mantras that we talk about, you know, hard work, belief, focus, vision, risk taking, talent, perseverance, you can go on and on. But all these success mantras are now the side effects of the process itself. I'm so engaged, I'm so, it commands my attention so much that there's nothing else that I can think about. So hard work doesn't feel, it feels like hard work. And there's nothing else that you can do but to uh, persist. Talent you will cultivate, vision you will get, focus there is no other way because it's, 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 it's commanding your attention so much. So, here I am right now, five years uh, down the line. Money and fame, although still could not earn back their reputation in my life. But let me show you one thing. I have much more of them than I had ever planned. And the best thing, uh, my college, uh, one of the professors was very dear to me, called me recently uh, about uh, asking me to plan this interaction with students and I very humbly requested that can I get my degree back? <laughs> and it's, uh, uh, it's happening and I'm very excited again. Thank you so much. Also. It's sad when you obviously know what ended up happening, but yeah. it's, it's a very powerful, um, obviously, and I'm sure he, he felt that at the time, mm -hmm. but I, that yeah, just because you show you how important mental health is. Yes. Just once, obviously at this point in his life, he's very happy and he found a certain happiness. That doesn't mean right. you're not going to go back into, into a hole no. uh, and it's going to be something totally different or the exact same thing. Right. Man, because there's so many factors that play into it that we will probably never know the answer to. Yeah. Some of which being the natural process that we go through, we being people who don't suffer with mental illness, mm -hmm. um, we go to logical A, B, C, D, and E, uh, yeah. what it could have been. Yeah. And there's so many myriads of factors that contribute to the situation that he was in, even something as, as uh, not talked about that much as just a lot of mental illness is a chemical imbalance. Yeah. And that chemical imbalance can cause thoughts, cause emotions. So the last thing I would want to do is watch him here and then begin to speculate on oh, yeah. what happened from here to there. You know what yeah. I mean? For me, it I'm with you. Totally it's, it's, different. A, it's, it's a waste of time. Yeah. It's a waste of time and it misses the point of the truth. Because that's, that's the other thing that bothers me oftentimes is that if somebody dies in a tragic way, especially if they were to take their own life, that it, it somehow negates whatever wisdom they shared. You know what I mean? Because it, it, suddenly that moment defines them. And that's, if, if that's one thing I don't want to see happen with Shashant. We are already learning so much about his talent as, yeah. as, as an artist. And right here, what he was sharing is very, <laughs> very wise. Mm -hmm. So to take it in this, to do what he said, take him at his word in the now, mm -hmm. in that moment. Because what he shared was really, really important. And it's true for a lot of people. Too. It's very, very true. There's a reason why children uh, don't think about time-space continuum and mm -hmm. why your memories as a child, everything's bigger and longer and they're typically engaged because children live in the now. They're not thinking about what happened this morning. They're not thinking about what's happening tonight. 
-hmm. They are simply living in the now. And every other living thing lives in the now. And he's right. The nature of the work of an actor forces you to commit to the now, to live in the moment. And it is, I don't know about you, mm -hmm. that's one of the best things about acting mm -hmm. is everything else stops and I'm in the moment. Yeah. And you feel the most alive when you're just focusing on the moment. Yeah. And I, I think actually a lot of people don't realize, and it's misunderstood because a lot of actors are like him, mm -hmm. are introverts. Yes. Um, I'm actually very, I'm a very introverted person in terms of, I mean, I can talk to, I don't have a problem talking to people mm -hmm. in that sense, but I'm not in terms of like sharing about myself or like hanging out with a bunch of people. It's not really, I'm much more introverted and a lot of actors are like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and they use acting as a vessel Correct. to get out that um, energy or get out that emotion or get out that whatever it is. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's a very common thing that a lot of actors, Johnny Depp, yeah, that's a hundred percent that he, 100 he that. that's why he makes such grand characters a lot of times. Mm -hmm. He, I, I just, I've followed him for a long time. I don't think he's a very happy with himself person. Yeah. And he's his happiest when he's covered in makeup mm -hmm. and he's somebody totally different. Yeah. Uh, and so it, a lot of actors are like that. I'm sure Shashant uh, uh, is maybe not that extreme, but uh, is similar to that where it could be the happiest you are is when you're in that in that moment as an actor. And the, obviously the fact that obviously and that that goes to a lot of actors minds, a lot of people's minds, success is money yeah, and no. recognition. And obviously, the older you get, and it's a cliche, the older you get, the more you realize it's not... Money has literally zero to do with any happiness. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> like, you could have the uh, a homeless person be the happiest man on, on earth if he's, if, he, oh, yeah. if he's living, like, if he has the right mindset. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like, it's, it, money has nothing to do with it. No, and in many respects, people who do get wealth tend to be very unhappy because the expectation they had was the wealth itself would give them the happiness they sought. Mm -hmm. So they get the wealth and forget its primary purpose and then find themselves even more unhappy than before they got there. Yeah. Yeah. This, so this was yeah, beautiful was words of wisdom. Beautiful. Uh, yes. I love them more. We learn about him yeah. uh, and the kind of person he was uh, and obviously his talent is, well, we already know he was a really talented artist yeah um so if there's more videos uh let us know uh down below <laughs>